Hey, magic people. You're listening to another episode of Tutia Bruja. This is an impromptu episode because I want to give another update on my life and on the show. And also just to talk about like the nitty gritty healing that I feel like a lot of people don't actually talk about, right? Like I think a lot of people in the online witchy community don't talk about the shadow work and the shit that they're dealing with and the things that could probably help a lot more people than just trying to make it seem like, oh, everything in my life is awesome. And I mean, we're complex people, right? Like it is possible for a lot of things to be going right in your life, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you're doing the work and trying to understand who you are and why you react and why you do the things you do and breaking out of cycles, right? Today, I want to share that I have decided a lot of my back catalog will be disappearing in 2023. And you'll even notice that some of it has already disappeared. Because I want to be very honest. I started this show and I know that a lot of people listen to this show from the beginning and it kind of makes me cringe that there are people who are meeting me in a different time in my life. And I'm really becoming fond of the idea of like reintroducing yourself because there's a lot of people who know me and there's a lot of people who I think have an idea about me from like a different time in my life. And I just really don't identify with any of my past self. And I think that that's why shadow work can be so hard sometimes, right? Is because you have to do like that nitty gritty work to understand why you reacted the way you did or how the way that you reacted in that moment impacts you now, right? And so I really want to start fresh and I want to create a show that I can really stand behind and know that in two years, I'm not going to feel the same way. And I have to be very honest, I know that I've mentioned this, and I know it's been something I've talked about a lot with my patrons, but when this show first started, I had a very different idea of how it was going to go down. Originally, I wanted to release the show in October and of 2020 because I wanted to take my time and this and that. And then spirit really made me realize that you need to do this. You need to post this. And I didn't know why, right? So when you put your show a lot of the time on Apple Podcasts, typically within the first two weeks that it goes live is your most likely time to really have a plan and launch and to do what you're trying to do. And like any podcaster, my goal was to do well, you know, to create a show that I felt proud of, that filled a niche that I felt was needed, and to really just create the content I felt like I wanted to see. Very late, I can't even remember the specific date, but like in May, very late May, I decided that, okay, I'm going to make a trailer, I'm going to post it, I'm going to add the intros and outros to all of my podcasts podcast that I started, you know, putting together. Originally, Marcella Kroll was going to be the first guest. And then George Floyd was murdered. And everything changed. And I'm not gonna lie, part of me felt a little gross and ashamed that I was still going forward, that I was still doing everything that I needed to do to try and make it work because it just didn't really feel like it was my time to talk. I thought the least that I can do in this instance is to put all of the Black witches to the front, all of the Black practitioners that I've interviewed. We're going to put them first. We're going to hear them. We're going to hear their opinions on things. And I am glad that I did that, but it really made me rush something. And somebody once told me that my worst quality when I create is that I rush things. And I should have just stopped. I should have just not released it. I should have waited, but I didn't. 
And what I am grateful for, right, is I did start to help people down the path of at least, because that was a really heavy time for the black community and we did not need to be bombarding them with bullshit. How do I become a better ally? What books do I read? Yada, yada, yada. You know, like they were feeling and they were grieving. And I'm at least glad that a lot of people found me when they were in that time of like, what do I do? And I was able to pass on resources and I was able to pass out information that was by black authors that helped black nonprofits that helped the black community. Because I think that that's what's really important that we don't talk enough about is community and the sense of like, if people are going through it, we step up for them in the ways that we can. I'm really glad that a lot of people were able to start their path of anti racism or become a stronger ally and learn how to decolonize a lot of, you know, their thought process. I'm really glad for that. This show has resonated with a lot of people. I'm really glad that I've been able to make so many friends and, you know, just meet my colleagues and people who are genuinely doing healing work. You know, it's so inspiring and it's so beautiful to have people around you who really at the end of the day are trying to figure out ways to like understand themselves and kind of just remove some of the colonial bullshit. I saw this video on TikTok that I'll put in the show notes and it said that the biggest thing living in a patriarchal society, especially as like women, trans people, queer and non-binary people, is that it is their goal to destroy our bodies. And this is a paraphrase, right? It's in Spanish if you can understand Spanish, but if not, you know, I'm just going to tell you the gist. If our bodies are depressed, if our bodies are down, if our bodies are sick, we're going to be less likely to learn how to protect ourselves and try to make the world better, you know, for like the future generations. And that takes a lot of different things, right? It takes knowledge. It takes verbal medicine. It takes not feeling so small in the larger scheme of things. It's understanding and having terminology when things happen to you that you don't understand. I think one of the hardest things for me personally growing up is that I didn't always have the terminology to explain like what was happening to me or the feeling that it gave. And now, because I didn't have that then, because everything comes with time, right? We figure it out. And, you know, one of the people that I've met through this show and really got to become good friends with is Metzgley Wolf. And they've been on two episodes of the podcast so far. If you don't know them, they're amazing. Support them. Donate to their wolf dog sanctuary. Buy their candles. Buy their money drawing oil. Honestly, let's not talk about my finances. They've been getting better and truly 100% owe that to Metzgley because they gifted me a money drawing oil and a fortune favor candle and things are coming together in a way that I really needed. And I feel like the thing that's been the best is we carry so much shit in our bodies and we carry so much stress. And sometimes when we focus on like all the negative stuff and we haven't talked about it and let it out into the universe, it keeps controlling us. Something that I've been dealing with lately in my search and my goal for healing, right, is where a lot of my triggers happen because like I've worked through a lot of stuff with my family. I've worked through a lot of the trauma that I've had, the generational trauma, understanding like where that came from, a lot of that. So like on that, not to say I still don't have my hiccups, but for the most part, I get it. I'm good. Something that I'm coming to terms with is that there were a lot of specifically white women who really, really, really figured out ways or did things to like humiliate me or torment me that really impacted my sense of self. And today, minding my business and doing whatever. And like a week ago at work, I had a moment that like really triggered me, that really just set me off, that really saw me have rage, right? And I didn't understand. And I was talking to my sister about it, right? And my sister was just like, I don't understand why this is upsetting you so much. And I couldn't really, like I could, but I couldn't make sense of it, right? And then I ended up smoking a bowl and I realized that it all sort of clicks because I've talked about this on the podcast before, but I know like one of the first awful interactions I've had with white women specifically in preschool, I wasn't allowed to hang out with the other kids. And that really like messed me up. Like I was isolated and made to feel like, oh, 
you can't be with everyone else, which is funny because I think like those same power tactics still sometimes happen in some spaces where it's like the woman who's finger quote deemed the alpha or whatever doesn't like me or has some issue with me. So when they come in, other people don't. And I I feel like you never really leave high school in some ways, but like, I don't know, maybe some of us can break out of that specific (laughs) mindset. Healing is a hell of a drug, right? But anyway, power dynamics, that's a whole thing. And I was talking to Matt's Glee and I had sort of explained the situation to them and sort of why it set me off and I think why it triggered me. And they recommended a book to me called The Becky Code and the fact that there are so many different types of white women and not all of them are harmful, obviously. Like I feel like the fact that even has to be said is just, listen, there's good and bad of all different types of people. Jane Fonda, lover or hater, you know, she did a lot of really amazing things in a time where people didn't do that sort of stuff. And I mean, she was just being a good person, but this is to say there have always been people who relate to struggle and give a fuck and have empathy. And there are people who don't, but I've encountered a lot of people who don't. I've encountered a lot of people who use their power over other people. And therefore I have a lot of frustration and resentment. And I'm very quick to kind of like have my guards up around a lot of white women. And that's my cross to bear, right? Like I got to figure that out with time. You know, I've been having all these interactions lately that have really made me feel like, okay, like what other stuff do I have here? And it's quite a bit, honestly. And I really, really attribute, you know, taking mushrooms, psilocybin is really truly one of like the best things for starting to recall some of those memories, working on getting past them and letting them go. Because another one that recently came up is, whew, this one's heavy. But I remember my parents were like not well off. We never had to worry about food insecurity or housing insecurity and stuff like that. I always had a roof over my head. I always knew that I was going to eat. I would even say at times I was spoiled because I think my parents tried to give us so much that they didn't have. And so I never grew up without. But that being said, I remember one time that it was chicken tender day, but it was like chicken rings. And that day was always my favorite because there was mashed potatoes and some type of veggie typically other than that. And then like maybe a fruit cup. Then you would get your juice, right? It was like a whole thing. And that was always my favorite. And I remember that that day I had forgotten to grab the check for like lunch money. And so if you didn't pay for your lunch, you had to eat PB&J sandwich. And I just remember being like, I'll pay for it tomorrow. It's not that big of a deal. And I got it anyway. And maybe that was like entitlement because I was spoiled. I don't, I'm not going to say it wasn't, but I remember that the head lunch woman, she was this white woman, gray hair. I feel like at this point in her life, she was probably just very unhappy. And I don't know what the fuck happened to her that day, but she just went off on me. She screamed at me in front of all of my classmates, just truly humiliated me and basically threatened me and said that you better be sure to bring your lunch money tomorrow or there's going to be a huge problem. And I just don't understand, right? Like even as an adult, like I just don't understand how you berate a child for wanting to have something other than fucking a PB and J. I'm sorry, like maybe that's just me, but like I feel like a PB and J was a snack. Maybe that's my entitlement, right? But for me, that just didn't seem like an adequate lunch. And also, I think it's really fucked in hindsight to make children or their families have to pay for something when you require children to be somewhere for eight hours. Like, how? dare you require children to have to be somewhere and then still insist that they have to pay to be fed. That just doesn't seem fair. If I have to be here, there should be some sort of funding to make sure that the children who have to be in said place can eat. There are so many things that are meant to punish the poor. And the more that I make these realizations, the more that my brain is allowing me to remember like where a lot of these triggers come from, the more that like my magic is actually effectively working because you can't bring in things when you still have all this negative space or all these negative ideas inside of you. 
So this is to say it's hard. It's really hard to have to remember things. But I also think that we have to because if we don't, we keep bleeding on people that didn't cut us. We keep being re-traumatized. We keep lashing out. We keep freaking out. We keep, I want to get to a point where maybe I don't have such a visceral reaction or angry reaction when some white woman is being terrible to me because like the situation at work was so dumb. It was like I stepped away and my belongings were moved. And when I whined about it, I was patronizingly told that I was being grumpy. It's like what adult says that to another adult, first of all. And anyway, the whole situation just totally pissed me off. And then like, if that wasn't bad enough, if you're going to want someone to not keep being frustrated with you or finger quote argue with you, don't take that as an opportunity to walk away and still talk shit. And I feel like that's something that the power dynamics, the ability to shut down a conversation, you know, when we don't want to deal with it, or it seems like too much, that is a privilege. And something I've learned recently too, is that we don't need unsolicited opinions. We don't need unsolicited advice. That is unintended harm. Even if we don't mean it to be, it can be harm. And I want that to be an example. That was unintended harm that really just set me the fuck off. I was seeing red, like I was so mad, you know, and I'm just like, I don't need to keep having these things that like I'm reacting because there's a root there that I haven't pulled out and processed. I just think at a certain point in our lives, right, like you gotta like move past it. I'm in my villain era, babe, and I don't even care because I no longer am allowing myself to be available for things that make me feel like shit. And a lot of my youth, a lot of my childhood, I allowed myself to be talked to. I allowed myself to be manipulated. I allowed myself to not have boundaries. And the hardest lesson I fucking learned is that people liked me better before I had boundaries. And I'm going to talk about that more in the future. That's a future conversation. But this is to say, if you're having this blockage, if you feel like maybe some of your magic isn't really doing what you want it to do, or you're wishing for something and you just feel like it's not coming, also take the time to maybe realize like you're not ready for the thing you're asking for. I think a lot of the times we like have these ideas, we have these thoughts, we have these plans. And the reason they don't work out is because like we are blocking our own blessings. So stop blocking your own shit. Take the time to process what happened to you. And don't let it have so much power over you. Like that's really the largest message here. This isn't to say that like, oh, good vibes only. And no, like bad shit happens to us without a doubt. The system is like stacked up in a way that's not wanting a lot of us to win. I totally hear you. And I totally get that. But at the same time, stop being so woe is me if that's something that you struggle with. I have gotten a lot better about leaving that mentality, that idea, that thought process because it's not beneficial to me anymore. And if you're feeling a little like targeted or this is triggering you, I think that means you have some shadow work and some stuff you got to process too. And may we all heal together. I mean, at this point, I hope you've realized that this podcast is about learning how to be better allies to other marginalized people because a lot of the people who listen the show are marginalized or it's white folk who are trying to do better. And I'm like, I don't care if you're here, you should be here. Let's all learn together. Anybody's allowed to listen. But the most important thing is, are you willing to learn? Are you willing to grow? And I'm not a fucking like mental health professional. So that being said, because I'm not trying to intend harm, this is just a podcast about like what I'm doing and what works for me. And what works for me is trying to learn where my shit comes from, trying to learn the historical context of a lot of things, because it really does paint the picture of why things things are the way they are and trying to decolonize in the way that we're not going to perpetrate white supremacy through our magic, through our behavior, through our projects, etc. whatever. This is a space for magic growing, healing, and just being a bad bitch. So if uh, you fuck with me, I hope that you will enjoy the direction that this show is going to have in the future and you appreciate People being vulnerable with you and sharing their stories. Sometimes when we hear someone else say something, it does help excavate to get to like the thing that's really holding us down. Additionally, the last story I want to tell, because I've decided that my villain era is going to include a lot of crop tops. And if you were a woman, a girl, a femme presenting person in the early 2000s, you will remember how vile it was as far as clothes. 
Everything was lower, lower, lower. Shirts were cut short. I remember being taller and kind of chubs in middle school. And I remember having a teacher tell me that my shirt was inappropriate because sometimes I would raise my hand or whatever and a little bit of my belly showing if I was standing. I remember that really fucking bothering me. And I think the reason it bothered me so much, it's because you're worried about my fucking shirt, but our whole class is aware that there are students like fingering each other. Like maybe your priorities are in the wrong place, babe. You know what I'm saying? Maybe you should worry about being more attentive to what's going on in your classroom other than my shirt. If Winnie the Pooh can not wear panties and wear crop tops, then so the fuck can I. That's my villain era and I'm looking forward to it. Thank you for listening. I hope that maybe this was something that you needed to hear. And remember that like we are not our trauma. We are so much more than that. And yeah, I appreciate you listening. If this was helpful or you think someone should listen to it, by all means, please share. I love the space, the community that we've created here. I'm so thankful to y'all for listening. I'm so thankful for the patrons who help fund this show. You know, I never have to worry about, I use Pinecast and I really like it. It's gives me a lot of analytics and stuff like that so I can track things for like sponsorship purposes and stuff because that is a reality, you know. I'm very thankful and grateful for the people who do get something out of this and want to ensure that it keeps happening. Because I'm so grateful, I want y'all to still have all of the original episodes. And so like I said, those are going to be on my back catalog. And if there are particular ones that you think should be re-released, please tell me. Please tell me, you can email me, you can send me a DM, you can whatever. One that for sure is going to be re-released is the tequila episode because that's where my family's from. And I think that it's important to understand, again, the historical context of why things are the way they are now. And uh, tequila is this big tourist attraction now because it's the birthplace of tequila. And if it wasn't for Cenobio Sousa, that wouldn't have happened. That being said, please let me know what episodes you'd like to have re-released. In the meantime, I would really like for you to do something that makes you happy and makes you smile and give a little grace to that inner child. You know, sometimes they're a little scared and they don't really know how to help us on our path. And uh, they resort to old methods of being and we got to release that. Thank you for listening. I appreciate you. I'm grateful for you. Have a good one. Bye. Yeah.